away.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody as we gather together this morning, as we gather in our Lord's name here. We have a few announcements as we begin. Uh, first of all, just to uh, continually keep in our prayers, uh, Paige uh, Fitzsimmons did accept our call here to be our uh, uh, Youth and Family Minister Director here at Berea. So that will be going forward, and she'll be installed here at Berea the first Sunday of August. So the first Sunday of August is when she will be installed here at Berea. That's coming up very, very fast, in case anybody was wondering. A couple of other announcements. First, I was told that we're celebrating uh, Bill, is this your, uh, should I give the number? Okay, 90th birthday, right?
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him from the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. Peace be to the brothers, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ, with love incorruptible. You may be seated.
sing together verse 1 and 10 of our hymn.
book of Ephesians. It comes from Ephesians, the second chapter. And this is one of the most glorious chapters in Scripture of sharing about the grace and faith of our Lord. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived, in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages, He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before Him, that we should walk in This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we skip ahead to our gospel. As the Holy Gospel is found according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why his miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, He is Elijah. And others said, He is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted him put to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came, when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for the nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish. And I will give it to you. And he vowed her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a plan. The king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. Immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went out and beheaded John in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard it, they came and took his body. Laid it in a tomb. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with the final hymns of our final verses of our hymn. Yellowstone National Park. 
Can't have much more of a beautiful place than that in order to serve the Lord. So for five days a week, I did housekeeping. Doing beds, cleaning toilets, all those fun things that need to be done. And then on Sunday morning, we would gather together in the amphitheater and lead the people, whoever would come that was there, in worship and praise of our Lord and share the incredible grace that God has given to us. Now, as I was there, they kind of had us in these dormitories type structures. So, you know, they had about four people gathered together in each itty bitty room. Got a little bit cranked. And while I was there with the Christian Ministry in National Parks, there was also a Southern Baptist group that was also there. And their purpose, we were doing the worship services. Their point was while they were doing housekeeping, they were then kind of starting some Bible studies and leading people in going through God's Word. So my thought was, sounds good. Let's go. What's wrong with going to a Bible study? So I went to the Bible study. Basically, it was me, a Presbyterian, and about eight Southern Baptists. Sounds like a joke, doesn't it? But there we are gathered together in this dorm. We got, you know, about, I think it was uh, eight, uh, there was ten of us that were there. You have a couple of people s sitting on the beds. The rest of us kind of gathered around on the floor, sitting cross-legged. We were in our teens and low twenties, so we were easy to get up and down at that point. And we all have our Bibles as we're gathered around. Now we come to this text today. One of the most incredible, glorious passages of God's grace and love towards us. And so we started going through it. And kind of a difference between the Southern Baptists and the Lutherans gets to here. Now Lutherans are Christians, Southern Baptists are Christians. So these are us Christians talking and sharing and going through God's word together. And we came to this. And it was kind of exciting. Because it's like, you know what everybody? This shows how awesome the grace is that God's given to us. All God's Word. It's a gift. I thought everybody would say amen, right? But I found out there is some disagreement going forward. And this is where I started to kind of run into the disagreements between our brothers and sisters in Christ and some of the other denominations. Still all Christian, still all believing in our Lord, will be gathered together with Him one day. But as we look here, this is the grace that has been given to us. And I was trying to explain to them, in my way, that this is just a gift. A gift is nothing that we do. Isn't that awesome? And then, of course, the reaction that I got from them was, it's pretty cool that God has given us His grace, and now all we have to do is accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. All we have to do and I was trying to explain to them how wonderful this is. All God. And yet I, I kept running into it. Yes, but and, and, and. And I tried as much as I could to explain. Free gift, completely undeserved, holy from our Lord. But I had trouble explaining it. I even brought forward a couple of uh, things that I remember from my pastor's uh, sermons. And yes, sometimes when push comes to shove, we do remember some of the stories and things from our pastor's sermons. And as all of this kind of went forward, I remembered one point that my pastor back up Spring Lake Park is where I belonged at that point. What uh, the pastor had preached before I, before I went off to uh, Yellowstone. And in that sermon he was saying, this is what grace is. First, if, you have, if there's you and your neighbor, and you're both good friends and good buds, and your friend is off on a vacation, and you kind of take care of the house and pick up the packages that are there, uh, and you share and take care, you mow the lawn, you water his garden, that's good brotherly love, right? But here is grace. If that same neighbor that you have is a mean, honoring individual. 
If that same, if that neighbor that you have kind of says bad things about you, says things behind your back, you get that knife right in your back. They throw rocks and break your windows. Kind of think the worst of what you would want as a neighbor. And that neighbor does all of these things that hurt you. When your pastors show up on your door, they disappear and find their way somehow in your neighbor's house. And then that neighbor gets sick. And you go to that neighbor and you love that neighbor. And you share with that neighbor soup or whatever else. You let that neighbor know, I'm praying for you. That is grace. Something totally undeserved, yet the Lord giving. And I thought, with that, pastor did a good job with that, so amen, they should all get it, all right? And what was the answer? Nope. <laughs> and I just tried as much as I could, and I just couldn't figure out how to explain it to them. Now, a few years later, I started to kind of figure a few more things out. And as I was looking at this text, I started to realize that what I had done is I had jumped so fast to grace, which is a good place to jump to, isn't it? I had jumped so fast to Jesus, which is a good place to go to. But I had forgotten what Paul did in this text. Paul, having brought all of this forward, boy, I'm really skipping ahead here. There we go. Oh, I'm right. Paul, as he's going forward, shares that grace of God absolutely. By grace you have been saved by faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. What I had failed to do was to go back to verse 1. I had immediately jumped up to verse 8, which is an incredible gospel, the incredible faith, the incredible gift. Instead, I needed to go back to verse 1. Because that's kind of where it all comes from. Because in verse 1, and if you just kind of look at your reading here, you'll notice that there at verse 1, it starts, and you. You get down to verse 4, but God. What Paul is doing here, is those first three verses that start with but you is the law and pointing out our sin. Once you get to verse 4, but God, that's where we come into grace. That's where we come into faith. There we come into what God has done for us. So the first three verses, Paul is bringing the law to the people. And you notice that these are all Christians. He's writing this to the church in Ephesus. So they know their Lord. They know their Savior. And yet Paul immediately goes to the law. It's a very short 11 verse sermon going on here. And what Paul starts with, but you were dead in the trespasses and sins. So as Paul's talking about our faith, He's talking about our spirit, our soul. Where do we stand before our God? When we're left off to our own devices, that is dead. Nothing can be done. Nothing can be accomplished. Nothing can be taken care of. If someone is dead, there's nothing they can do. And that's where I needed to start. I needed to start in order to show how incredible God's grace is. With where we actually stand before he came and gave us grace. Because the world wants to go, or the church, and part of us wants to go straight to the grace, don't we? We want to go straight to grace, faith, salvation. We are in our Lord. In fact, as I was looking through this, I found somebody going forward and they put together this slide knowing Jesus.com is where it comes from. 
spiritually alive. Ephesians 2 verse 1. And what does Ephesians 2 verse 1 say? And you were dead in trespasses and sin. Even just looking here at the first verse, the person who put together this slide jumped ahead three verses. Because our natural inclination as Christians is to go straight to that grace. But we don't see how incredible that grace is without taking a look at the law, without looking at how needy we were. And it's not that we were needy, it's that we were dead. And as Paul continues on in these verses, he says we were dead and enemies of our Lord and our Savior. Able to do nothing. And in the midst of that, our Lord came to us and saved us and made us to be His very own. Because when we get a little bit further, we come up to Ephesians 2, verse 8. We come to these words. Divine grace. For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. What is grace? It's in giving us that grace and creating faith in our hearts where there was nothing. There was no inclination. There was no desire. There was no I want this. In the nothingness he comes and creates faith. That's the word of the Lord. You go all the way to the beginning. And the Lord creates the whole universe out of what? Nothing. Ex nihilo, out of nothing. He creates all things that are. And as he did that in creation, that's also what he does in our faith. Where there was nothing, he puts faith there. And he creates that faith in our hearts. I wish, going far back, that I had thought of this before. That in the midst of that Bible study, I had gone all the way to the beginning of this passage. Because there we see how incredible it was, this grace that our Lord has given to us. While we had nothing, no inclination, no desire, no thinking we're going to go forward, while we were empty and nothing, God sent His only Son into the world to die for us. While there was no good in us in His eyes, Jesus went to that cross. And on that cross, by His blood, saves us and makes us his own. And knowing that, and that's what Paul does in these verses. He starts out at the very beginning where we have nothing. And in the midst of that, God gave us the gift and created faith in our hearts. Whether through baptism, whether through Word, the word spoken in church, the word spoken by a mother, the word spoken by a friend. God created that faith. And he said to you, you are my own. That is a firm lock which we can stand. The lock of Christ and the lock of our Lord. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Oh, please rise as we confess together the common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us met and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Lord, be with us as a congregation, 
as we share your word, as we share what you have done, as we express your love towards our neighbors. We ask for your blessing on the food distribution this coming Saturday. May it be a blessing to our neighbors. May we be a blessing in deed and in word towards what you have done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, O oh Lord, that watch over this nation into which you have placed us. Be with our military personnel throughout this world and bless them in their duty. Watch over our elected leaders. We ask that you would give to them a servant's heart. Give to them, Lord, your wisdom and the strength to follow in your will. We pray, Lord, for our president and vice president, for our Congress, Supreme Court, and judiciary, for our governor, our legislature, and all of our elected officials. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you would be with those who are sick and hurting. Be with David Rao. Be with Rachel Cassandra. Bless them and keep them. Watch over all the people within this congregation who are celebrating that incredible gift of life that you have given. Especially, Lord, we lift up into your hands Darlene, Brandon, Daniel, Kevin, Corey, Darlene, Josie, and Sarah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift up into your hands, O oh Lord, Paige, as she has accepted the call here to Berea. We ask that you will bless her as this is her last Sunday at the church that she serves. We ask that you will bless her as she goes through this next week towards her wedding, next towards her wedding. And bless her as she takes the steps of coming here to Berea to serve you in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we pray in the words in which you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the same manner also took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink of it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all of us. May be seen.
Christ. May his body and blood strike and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God. That you have refreshed us with this salutary gift and implore you of your mercy and strengthen us in faith towards you and love toward one another. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn. But the Lord my God be praised. <laughs>